Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. In today's Subscriber Sunday video, we're going to be going over a very, very, very common problem that happens all the time when beginners start playing the violin. And I've got a video in for one of my subscribers who is in India. And when he is playing from the A string to the E string, uh, the E string is making that kind of, um, that kind of high pitched harmonic sound, like that horrible kind of screech that you get, maybe when you're cutting a knife and fork on a plate and you make that horrible kind of, uh, you know, teeth gritting kind of noise. So he's getting that when he is changing bows from the D, uh, sorry, from the A string to the E string, and it is very, very, very common in beginners. So we're going to have a little watch of his video now, just to have a look at the problem, and then we're going to come back and see if we can try and help him. Okay, so what is happening here, as I said, is a very, very, very common problem. And there are a few things that you can do to kind of remedy the situation without even doing anything. So the first thing is probably that I would guess by looking at that, he's just playing on a very, very kind of um, very cheap student violin. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem that you get with the very, very cheap violins is that the bridges are very, very poorly angled. So his option here would be to either upgrade to a better violin, if that was a possibility, or uh, perhaps get a perhaps get a new bridge and but then when you buy a new bridge then you're having the problem of, of paying to get the bridge fitted. So unfortunately bridges don't come sort of one size fits all. If you buy a bridge um, it's pretty much a standard size bridge where it it will be the curve will be pretty much level, and then what will happen? Your violin luthier or whoever it is that that alters it for you will then kind of match it to your previous bridge uh, and file down the bridge. They'll also look at the string action to see how high the strings are from the fingerboard and 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 that kind of thing. So. That can actually be counterproductive as well because that's going to cost you more money to do that. If those two are not an option, then he can do a little bit to alter his his playing. And I, I, I want to say it's kind of a 50-50 between the violin and the bridge being quite poorly angled and his bowing technique as well. So the first thing I would say is don't have your bow too tight. You want just a gentle curve in the bow. So now you've done that. That will stop you sort of inadvertently hitting the bow, uh, hitting the other strings, and also the bow won't be too rigid on the strings as well because you'll have some flexibility with the bow. The disadvantage of having the bow too tight is that it's that the bow is so rigid, so there's no flexibility there, and that can cause uh, that, that, that can cause you other problems a little bit further down the line, which I'm not going to go into in this video. So mainly, uh, looking at his video, I think the main culprit of this would be the angle of his bow isn't correct in addition to his fingers here touching the E. So wh whatever it was that he was playing, I think he was just playing a random selection of notes. So I can't replicate that because it's it's very difficult for me to kind of replicate that that screech, but I know why I know why he's getting it. And the reason is is that when he's bowing and then he's crossing over to the E string What's happening is one of two things, his third finger or whatever finger he had on the A string before he moved over to the E string is ever so slightly touching it so that when he bows, you're not getting, you're not getting the true sound of the E string. The E string is a much thinner string as well. So don't forget that you're going to have to give the bow a little bit more substance on that string. So when you come to the E string, try and give it a bit more oomph, maybe a bit more welly just to stop you from getting that kind of that, that, that high pitched harmonic sound. If you're too light and whispery on the string, then yes, you're going to get more of that harmonic sound. So he's moving over to the E string, but he's either leaving his third or second finger, whichever finger it was, it, and it's slightly over to the E string so that when he's playing the E string, it isn't a nice full on E string sound. It's got a tiny little bit of his finger that was on the previous string hovering over onto the E string. The other thing that it might be, and again, it's very, very difficult to tell what's going on so quickly with the hand, is that this part here with the hand, 
could be encroaching onto the E string. And that's probably more likely because if he's lifting his fingers off, so he's not playing any notes, and then he's going over to the E string, and then he's getting that high pitched sound, then I would bet my money that it's this finger, it's his index finger, however he's got that placed, I can't quite see in the video, but it's ever so slightly encroaching in on the E string. What you wanna make sure is that it, it doesn't. So you're gonna to have to find a position that's suitable for you when you're holding the neck. How I hold is with the pad of my thumb, pretty much underneath the side of the neck here, and then with this, with the kind of, with the first knuckle joint here, that's where I, I have the other side of the fingerboard. So I'm holding, I'm holding my violin like this. And then because I do it like that, I don't, I don't ever, like when the finger comes over, I don't ever hit any other strings. The other thing as well is that he may not be giving the bow enough bow. He might not be giving the string enough bow when he's playing the E string. So all of that in combination is probably why he's getting that, that harmonic, that high pitched E string. Um, added with the fact as well, he's not actually moving his bow across. So it's kind of halfway in between. So the A string is here, the E string is there. So can you see the levels of my arm here? So I'm mainly talking about this part here. So if I want to play the G string on its own, my arm has got to be at this level here. If I want to play the D, my arm goes down a few inches, A goes down a few inches more and E probably disappears off the screen. So what he's doing is instead of a string being here and the E string being there, he's moving his, his arm sort of somewhere in between that. So therefore he's not even isolating the strings. So there we go. I hope that that's helpful. I know it is a very, very common problem, but the good news is, is that usually after a while that does disappear and that doesn't happen. I wouldn't run out and go and get a brand new violin now. If that's something that if that's something that you can't do, there's no reason to do that. Just perfect your technique first. If you are finding that you're working really, really hard on your technique and it's not your fingers up here and it's not your bow and you're still getting that sound, then you may you may find that it is in, it is the bridge that's the problem and then you may find that you want to upgrade to something a little bit better. So thank you very much. I hope that has helped you. I'm really, really sorry I can't pronounce your name, uh, but I hope that has helped helped you and I hope that it's helped you as the watcher as well or anybody else that uh, is having the same problem. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next Sunday on Subscriber Sunday. Bye.